Hi students, welcome to my session. Myself Ramya and I'll be teaching social science for you for 6 CBSE. So today in the session we are going to study about the Ashoka, the emperor who gave up the war. So before entering who is Ashoka and what are those things, let us see this 100 rupees note. I hope everyone would have seen this 100 rupees note, right? Can you see a lion emblem here? You might be wondering why I am speaking about lion when I am about to speak about Ashoka. There is a point in that. So in the later classes you will know why I am speaking about this lion over here. So in the starting of the chapter that is page number 67 you will come up with a story. There is one girl called Roshan there. Okay. This Roshan is actually getting some of uh, uh, some money, some crisp money, the new money, okay, which is very good and it smells quite good. I think you should feel it. And then she is getting from her grandfather for her birthday, and she badly wanted to buy a new CD. And she also wanted to just see and feel how these new brand nudes are. You see, the new brand notes will look so good, so pretty, right? Then, what is happening here is she notices somehow there is not only a Gandhiji over here, she also notices a emblem here. It's a lion emblem there. Okay, so she notices somehow there. And then, she wonders, like you and me, why are these lions here? Why is this lion picture is depicted here? So you might have not seen those lion emblem or lion things not only in the notes, even in the coins like this. Can you see it exactly how it looks like? It looks great, right? I like lion. Do you like lion, my dear students? If you do like, please comment me. Okay. So let us speak about a very big empire now. An empire called as Mauryan Empire. How, what are these empires? These are nothing but, these empires are nothing but a big dynasties where a king will be ruling all these places. Okay, so the lion that we see in our notes, coins do have a very long history. They are nothing but, they are actually carved in stones and it is placed in the massive stone pillars. At Sarnath, you will be studying in chapter 8. Ashoka was one of the greatest known ruler in the history. And he had also written certain inscriptions in this pillar that I said you about Sarnath pillar, right? He, was, he had written certain inscriptions. And it was inscribed in this pillar and in the rock surfaces. Before that, find out what of what was what was written in these inscriptions. Let us let us see why this kingdom was called as empire. This kingdom is actually uh, kingdoms are normally small, but this is an empire. Can you see how big it is? Don't you see it has occupied almost till uh, till Karnataka here, and here it was almost occupied. Uh, Afghanistan and almost a certain part of Bangladesh, Bhutan and certain part of China also. So because it is so big, it is called as empire. Okay. And then the empire that Ashoka ruled was founded by his great grandfather that is Chandragupta Maurya. That is Chandragupta Maurya. Okay. So it was more than 2300 years ago. Remember, it's 2300 years ago. Very, very long back, is it not, my dear students? Okay. Chandragupta was supported, was supported by a wise man called as Chanakya or Kautalya. Many of the Chanakya's ideas is written in a book called Arthashastra. Okay. He was supported by Chanakya and it was some of his books or some of his ideologies is written in Arthashastra. Okay, so the Arthashastra is basically a book which is written by 
Kautilya or his name is Chanakya. How do you have a pet names like Puppy and Dolly and all like? So the same way even these peoples also have a short names or a different names. So he has two names that is Kautilya and Chanakya. You should not forget it. Okay. He is a very very important person in our economics especially. So you will read about them in, a, in very detail in the further classes. Can you see there are several cities here, especially in this map. So I said you this is Mauryan Empire, right? So can you see there are several cities here, right? So these included Patliputra. I think you can see it here. These included Patliputra here. Can you see it here? Patliputra and Taksila and many such will uh, many such towns which was very very important okay and taxila was a it was a gateway for north west it was a gateway for north west including central asia while ujjaini uh, laid a route to north to you can find ujjaini here it is a route to north to south direction merchants officials what they used to do is normally the basic center or administrative center would have been in Pataliputra and they used to come from here for any kind of official work or whatever it might be they used to come from north India to south India okay and then many merchants officials and even craftsmen used to probably live in these cities and these are the main important cities in other areas there were like villages many many small farmers and herders what do you mean by herders sweetheart please comment me in the comment section okay what do you mean by herders i'll explain this in the next session okay in some areas in the central india what is central india central india is nothing but this part of india is called as central india central india there were forests and where people used to gather in the forest they used to produce uh, uh, gathered for forest produce what what do you mean by forest produce it is a, a nothing but the fruits leaves which is edible which is uh, which is good to eat and they used to hunt animals for food people in different parts of the empire spoke different languages they probably ate different kind of food like how we we, we will not eat only like um, Anasamba, right? We eat different kinds of foods, right? So even these peoples probably had eaten different kinds of foods and they used to wear different clothes wears. So thank you so much students. So in the next session, I'll be teaching you about the ruling of empire. Thank you so much.